This facial cleanser is going to be able to lather, it's going to have a good consistency and not be all watery. It's going to feel like something that you would actually buy in a store. So as usual, let's just get straight into it. Here's how to make an oil-free face cleanser from scratch. Hi guys and welcome to Whole Elise. I'm Elise and today I'm going to show you how to make an oil-free face cleanser from scratch. So instead of relying on pre-made soaps like Castile or African black soap, I'm actually going to show you how to take raw surfactants, clays and gums to make an all natural face cleanser that's mild enough to be used on an everyday basis while still feeling silky and luxurious without the use of oils. As always, start by measuring out the ingredients to make our oil free face cleanser. Measure out the water, our natural surfactant, I'm using decal glucoside, glycerin, Curling clay and xanthan gum. Oh wait, decal what? Curling who? Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with some of the ingredients of our face cleanser. At wholeelise.com you'll get the full written recipe breakdown, including more information about surfactants, gums, the importance of pH balance, as well as how to make this a foaming face wash. You'll also find a formula calculator to help you scale this recipe and links to where I purchased ingredients. This is a great resource for anyone interested in making natural cosmetics. So do check out wholeelise.com, it will be linked in the description box below. Surfactants, which is shorthand for surface active agents, are molecules with both water loving and oil loving properties. Now this is really useful because it means that it combines both oil and water together. That not only makes cleaning dirt possible, but it can also do things like emulsify and condition. In fact, the emulsifiers that we use in creams and lotions are actually a type of surfactant. But to keep this simple and relevant to face cleansers, I'm only going to be focusing on surfactants that you would use for cleaning. Now there are four different types of surfactants, but anionic and non-ionic surfactants are the main ones that are used for cleansing. Anionic surfactants tend to be the harsher of the two, and this is typically where you'll find ingredients like sulfates. So instead, I'm going to be using decal glucoside, which is a mild non-ionic surfactant that's derived from things like coconut, corn, and sugar. Decal glucoside is a really mild surfactant, and it's typically found in cleansing products aimed at babies, so things like shampoos and washes. It's also a very popular choice to use in any cleansing that's made for sensitive skin. And that of course makes decal glucoside a great choice to use as the base of our face wash, because we don't want anything that's going to be too harsh or overly stripping. And the best part is that decal glucoside actually produces a really good foam, meaning that our final face cleanser is going to feel silky and luxurious, but also have a pretty decent lather. This step is optional but if you'd like to add a couple essential oils to your face cleanser for fragrance, you can add it directly to your surfactant. This will help the essential oils to mix throughout your cleanser rather than sitting on the surface. I'm using chamomile, lavender and grapefruit essential oils. Now if you want this face cleanser recipe to be completely oil free then you can just skip this step. But if you would like your face cleanser to have some sort of fragrance, then here's where we would add in some essential oils. Typically in recipes, essential oils are one of the last ingredients that we add, but seeing as this is oil free, we do have to approach it in a slightly different way. In addition to being cleansers, surfactants also have the ability to work as an emulsifier. If you've ever made natural face wash recipes before that don't include emulsifiers, you'll notice that the oil always sits on the surface layer of your water-based ingredients. And this is usually why you're required to shake everything up before you apply it. But the beauty of using decal glucoside is that we can actually add our essential oils directly to it, and this will ensure that it's completely dispersed throughout our face cleanser recipe so you're not going to get that little layer of oil on the top. Of course this step is completely optional but if you do want to add in a couple essential oils just to give your face cleanser a really nice fragrance then this would be the stage to do it. Prepare your xanthan gum by mixing it into your glycerin. This will need to sit for 20 minutes before it will be ready to thicken our cleanser. Gums are a great natural thickener that will help provide body and stabilize our cleanser. Just by adding a small amount, you can create a thicker, more indulgent face cleanser that feels great on the skin without you having to rely on using oils. I'm using xanthan gum because it's naturally derived, it's water-based, it doesn't cause irritation, and it's easy to get a hold of. Of course, we can't use things like cetyl alcohol or emulsifying waxes because we are trying to keep this an oil-free recipe. So relying on gums is a great way to get a thicker, better-feeling face cleanser. So gums are great, but they're also notoriously difficult to work with. 
The problem is they actually work a little too well. As soon as you add any water to gums, they immediately start to thicken, and this is usually before you have a chance to mix it thoroughly throughout your solution. This is what leads to that sort of uneven texture, which is common when you use gums as thickeners. To make sure that our face cleanser has a thick, smooth consistency, we have to mix our xanthan gum with glycerin first. This means that instead of having xanthan gum in powder form, you'll have a liquid with the xanthan gum dispersed evenly throughout, making it so much easier to add to our face cleanser and give us a really smooth, thick consistency. Before combining our face cleanser ingredients together, you'll want to thoroughly mix in your cowling clay to the water first. Doing this now allows us to use a whisk or a blender to dissolve the clay, without needing to worry about the surfactant foaming when it's mixed in. The face is high stakes. The skin is extremely sensitive, so we don't want anything that's going to be abrasive, irritating, or potentially lead to breakouts, which is why we're going oil free. But unfortunately, if you remove the oil, it becomes difficult to create a moisturizing face wash, which is where the clay comes in. Cowling clay is especially fine and gentle, which is why it's often the go-to clay to use in face products. It's a natural clay that extracts impurities and absorbs excess oil without causing redness or inflammation. And this is what makes it suitable for all skin types, including sensitive skin. With regular use, it can balance your skin's oil production, which reduces the likelihood of clogged pores or breakouts. And when you mix it with water, even though it does feel smooth to the touch, it has tiny crystals that help to remove debris and dirt on your skin surface. It also has a lower pH than popular clays like bentonite, razzle or French clay, and that brings it more in line with your skin's natural pH. Unlike soap, cowling clay doesn't foam, but instead it gives a sort of silky texture to our face cleanser, making it feel wonderfully soft on the skin and leaving you feeling really hydrated. At this point, we're ready to assemble our oil-free face cleanser. Start by adding your surfactant to the water and clay mixture. Try to mix this by hand rather than using an electric whisk or blender so that you don't cause the mixture to bubble and foam. Next, add your xanthan glycerin mixture. At this stage, we can briefly use either an electric whisk or an immersion blender to ensure that our xanthan gum is thoroughly dispersed throughout our face cleanser so that it will thicken evenly. Try to use short bursts with the immersion blender and check regularly to make sure that you don't overmix the xanthan gum. Blend for no longer than one minute. The gum also takes a little time to thicken, so once it's mixed in, it'll need to set before your face cleanser reaches its final consistency. To keep your face cleanser safe to use, add a natural preservative. I'm using Preservative Eco. But before we're done, we'll need to adjust the pH of our cleanser. Our skin is naturally acidic with a pH of around 4 to 5, but that does vary. Cleansers on the other hand, like soap and surfactants, are highly alkaline, and that's why they're so effective at being able to remove dirt, debris, and build up on our skin. But the closer a product's pH is to our skin, the less likely it's going to cause irritation. So we need to find that right balance between our product being effective, but not irritating. Generally speaking, when it comes to cleansers, a good pH range is between five to seven. Now our surfactant is alkaline with a high pH, meaning that our facial cleanser is already out of that five to seven pH range that we're trying to aim for. So once our face cleanser is formulated, we check the pH and then adjust. Now that might sound a little complicated, but adjusting a pH just means that you're adding in a product that's either highly acidic or highly alkaline, and that will bring your formulation's pH back in line to that optimal range. Common natural pH adjusters are baking soda that increases alkalinity, and citric acid, which is what we'll be using in this case, that increases acidity. If you don't have an electronic pH meter, using the strips like this one here is an easy way to check how acidic or alkaline your face cleanser is. Place one end of the strip into your solution for just a second or two to measure its pH. You can see that our face cleanser has a high pH. To adjust, use a small amount of citric acid. You'll only need a tiny amount that's probably too small to measure on a regular scale. So try to add only a light sprinkle into your face cleanser. Once you've mixed it in, check the pH again to make sure that it's in our target range of 5 to 7. Foaming cleansers are often preferred and found to be more effective than regular face washes. Keep watching to see how to make this into a foaming face cleanser. There are two elements to our face cleanser working effectively. 
lather and exfoliation. The lather helps to spread your cleanser across your skin and the foam actually breaks down the oil, dirt and debris that reside on your face. And the second element is exfoliation. While this face cleanser is gentle enough to be used as an everyday face wash, it still does provide a little exfoliation. The cowling clay is tiny crystals along with you physically massaging the face cleanser into your skin helps the already loosened dirt and debris to be washed away with water. This cleanser is already designed to produce a great lather, so to make it into a foaming cleanser, all we need to do is to change its container. Foam dispensers or foaming pump bottles have a mechanism in the pump that allows lathering cleansers to produce foam. You can purchase similar bottles to this one on eBay or Amazon. Simply pour in a small amount of your face cleanser, it'll tell you how much on your respective bottle, followed by a larger amount of water and mix. This oil-free face cleanser produces a wonderful foam that's ready to apply directly to your face. So hopefully you've seen just how easy it is to make your own natural oil-free face cleanser. Check out the videos on screen for more face and complexion tutorials and subscribe with the notifications bell for more natural DIYs. Thanks for watching. For more DIYs, check out my other natural face and complexion tutorials.